Hello and welcome to episode 8 of this 32 point series where I explain every county on the island of Ireland. This time it's County Donegal. Donegal is a coastal county located in the border region of the island of Ireland in the province of Ulster. It is one of the three Ulster counties in the independent Republic of Ireland, the others being Monaghan and Cavan. Donegal borders the counties of Derry, Tyrone and Fermanagh as well as a short border with Leitrim to the south, its only border with another county in the Republic. The county is 4,860 square kilometres in area, making it the fourth largest county on the island, larger than Kerry and smaller than Mayo. Donegal is home to around 160,000 people, making it the 13th most populous, ahead of Wexford but behind Tipperary. The name Donegal derives from the Irish name of Donegal Town, Dún an Owl meaning Forest of the Foreigners. The Foreigners are believed to be Vikings who settled in the area of the modern day town. Donegal has also historically gone by another name, Tyr Coddell, which means Land of Connell. Tyrconnell was a kingdom in the area in medieval times and was also the official name for Donegal from Irish independence in 1922 until 1927. Some nicknames for Donegal are the hills due to the fact that Donegal is very hilly, the previously mentioned Tyrconnell and the O'Donnell County after the O'Donnells, the dominant Gaelic clan in the area in medieval times. The O'Donnells are basically to Donegal what the O'Reillys were to Cavan or the O'Briens to Clare. Donegal is also called the Forgotten County since it is cut off from the rest of the Republic, as well as the Herring Gushers referencing the county's fishing industry. The county colours are green and gold, and the county motto is Mutarim Habiatis Caritatem, meaning have love for one another. An anthem used for the county is Las Vegas in the hills of Donegal. The car registration play code is DL as just D was given to Dublin. Local newspapers include Donegal News, Donegal Democrat and the Lesher Kenny Post, while the main local radio stations are Highland Radio with Ocean FM in the south of the county. Starting at the south, the short border with Leitrim is the only connection between Donegal and the rest of the Republic of Ireland. From the divided settlement of Manger, the border with Fermanagh heads north. More divided towns can be found at Balik, the westernmost settlement in the UK and at Peshigo. The border with Tyrone begins to follow the River Finn, which joins with the Foyle between Straban and Lifford. The Foyle then acted as a natural boundary between Donegal and Derry, until Derry decided to take all of the land around Derry City for themselves. Downstream we arrive at Loch Foyle, where there's a boundary dispute between Ireland and the UK, with both sides claiming the entire loch. The two main mountain ranges in Donegal are the Derry Vey to the north and the Blue Stacks to the south. It is in the Derry Vey Mountains where Glen Vey, Ireland's second largest national park, as well as the highest point in the county can be found, the iconic Whiteside Peak of Errigal. The national park is also where Golden Eagles have been reintroduced into the wild in Ireland. On the shores of Loch Vey in the national park is Glen Vey Castle, which was actually built in the late 19th century. To the north is the rugged Inishowen Peninsula, the largest in Ireland which is home to Mallon Head, the northernmost point on the island of Ireland and a Star Wars filming location. Mallon Head is also the reference point which height above sea level in Ireland is measured by. Being so far north, it's also the best place in Ireland to see the northern lights. To the west of Inishowen is Loch Swilly, one of three glacial fjords in Ireland. On the western side of the loch is Fannet Head, with its iconic lighthouse built in 1817. Fannin is one of 11 lighthouses in the county. The spectacular coastline of cliffs, beaches, bays and islands continues from Fannin Head to the Roskill Peninsula, to Hoyne Head, Bloody Foreland and down to the Schlieve Lee Cliffs. They're some of the highest sea cliffs in Europe and are almost three times the height of the more famous cliffs of Moher in County Clare. To the east of here is St John's Point and Donegal Bay, the largest bay in Ireland. The bay is a good place to spot seals. Two species live around the Donegal coast, the common seal and the grey seal. Donegal also has an endless amount of pristine beaches, such as Kinnegal Bay, Ballymastoka Strand, Marble Hill, Murderhall Beach, Carrick Finn, Point New and Tollin Strand at Bundoran, the surf capital of Ireland. Speaking of Bundoran, some of you wanted me to mention the Bundoran Adventure theme park. 
Donegal also has many islands such as Avonboy, the northernmost island in Ischahul, Inch Island in Loch Swilly, and the remote Tory Island which had its own king until its passing in 2018. And that's only the coastline. On the interior we find many mountain passes, lakes, bogs and glens. Blanket bogs cover around 30% of the county and there's also the unique Maca habitat. This rare ecosystem is a low-lying coastal grassy plain, which formed due to lime-rich shell sand being blown inland. They can only be found in parts of the west of Ireland and Scotland. The main rivers in the county are the Foyle, Urn which has a hydroelectric power station and Swilly. In the south of the county near Peshiko we find Loch Derg, an important Catholic pilgrimage site connected to St Patrick. The traditional three day pilgrimage involves working barefoot, fasting and a 24 hour night vigil. The county is also home to many worshipfuls including those at Asavanka and Glen Evan. The geology of the county is made up of Precambrian Meshamorphic rocks, granites, lower carboniferous sandstones and limestones. The nice Meshamorphic rocks on Innistrachal Island are the oldest in Ireland, being 1.7 billion years old. Johnny Goyle is one of the most seismically active parts of Ireland due to the Lennan Fault, which is part of the larger Great Glen Fault which runs through Scotland. Speaking of rocks, Donegal is the centre of the mica crisis which has impacted thousands of houses in the county. Muscovite mica has led to defective building blocks which absorb water and cause cracks in walls, eventually making homes too dangerous to be lived in and forced to be demolished. This has led to many mass protests with homeowners demanding 100% compensation from the government as the homes were falling apart at no fault of their own. The largest town in County Donegal is Lesher Kenny, located at the southern end of Loch Swilly. The busy cathedral town is home to around 20,000 people and is also home to the Lesher Kenny Institute of Technology. It may be the most important town in the county, but it isn't actually the county town. The next largest settlements are Bunkthana, Ballybuffet and Trinoila, Donegal Town, Kindona, Ballyshannon and Bundoran. The county town isn't any of these, but the smaller town of Lifford on the border with Tyrone. The county is administered by Donegal County Council and is divided into these municipal districts and local electoral areas. Politically the county is mostly part of the Donegal but also the Sligo Leitrim Doyle constituency and the Midlands Northwest European Parliament constituency. The county has also historically been split up into the baronies which you can see on this map. The barony of Kilmacrenin is the largest in Ireland, being around the same size as County Monaghan. County Donegal is home to Donegal Airport located at Carrick Finn. The small regional airport only flies to Dublin and sometimes Glasgow and for the past three years it was voted as the most scenic landing spot in the world. National roads connect most of the main towns while the mountainous centre of the county has very few roads crossing it. The uneven coastline requires bridges such as the Harry Blaney Bridge or ferries to cut travel time between peninsulas. Ferries connect Greencastle to McGilligan Point in Derry as well as between Buncrana and Rathmullen across Loch Swilly. The county used to have an extensive railway network but the final line was closed in 1960 with many wanting to bring trains back to the northwest today. You can learn more about the former railways at the Johnny Goal Railway Heritage Centre which is currently restoring the Trumbo steam engine which was the last train to serve the county in 1959. Some places of interest within County Donegal include the Green Oil of Aylock, Wild Island, Oakfield Pike, Beltani Stone Circle, Malin Head, Doa Famine Village, Kindona St Patrick's High Cross, Fort John Ree, Tropical World, Donegal County Museum, Fanet Head, Doe Castle, Glen Bay National Park, The Poisoned Glen, Dune Foyish, Glen Cullum Kill Folk Village, The Schlieve Lee Cliffs, Donegal Castle and the Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. The county is also on the World Atlantic Way and there's also the Inner Shore and 100 Touring Route. Now a brief history. Evidence of Neolithic settlement can be found at Beltani Stone Circle near Rafo and the Malin Moikoi Tomb. In 400 CE, two brothers and sons of the legendary Nile of the Nine Hostages called Connell and Owen conquered much of northwestern Ulster and they set up the Kingdom of Aelok with the capital being the Stone Ring Foyish, the Grianoin of Aelok near Burish in County Donegal. Owen's descendants became the O'Neills of Tyrone, while those of Connell became the O'Donnells of Tyrconnell. Owen also gained control of what's now called the Inish Owen Peninsula. 
The O'Donnells, based in Donegal Castle in Donegal Town, went on to become one of Ireland's wealthiest and most influential Gaelic ruling families. This time period also saw mercenaries called Gallo Glasses settle in the county from Scotland, such as the Maxweenies. These heavily armoured warriors were very common in many Irish battles. Meanwhile, England was continuing its conquest on Gaelic Ireland, which culminated in the Battle of Kinsale in County Cork in 1601. This was a crushing defeat for the Irish, and in 1607, the flight of the Earl saw the exile of Rory O'Donnell, first Earl of Tyrconnell, and other Gaelic leaders to continental Europe. This paved the way for the plantation of Ulster. County Donegal as we know it today was established in 1585, and in 1610 Wash's now Derry City was transferred from Donegal to the new county of Londonderry. During the 1798 rebellion, French forces, including the famed Irish rebel leader Theobald Wolftone, attempted to land near Loch Swilly. They were defeated by the British in the Battle of Tory Island, and Wolftone was arrested and sentenced to death. Donegal was the worst hit county in Ulster during the Great Famine, with thousands emigrating through the Porsche of Derry. In 1922, Ireland was granted independence from the United Kingdom, after the Easter Rising and Irish War of Independence. This new free state only consisted of 26 of the 32 counties. Six of the nine counties of Ulster would remain in the UK as Northern Ireland. As part of the treaty, Britain would keep control over three strategic points, including Fort Dunry and Loch Swilly. These points were handed back in 1938, making it easier for Ireland to stay neutral in the Second World War. But wait, during the war Ireland was in 100% neutral. The Irish government allowed British military aircraft from Loch Erne in Fermanagh to fly over the narrow Donegal corridor between Balik and Ballyshannon out into the international waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The partition of Ireland cut Donegal life from the economic and transport hub of Derry as well as from the rest of the Republic of Ireland. This put the county in severe economic difficulty, with the lack of investment and high unemployment. Following the Good Friday Agreement, Donegal has been opened up with Northern Ireland and therefore the entire island again, being of great economic benefit to the county. However, Donegal is still the poorest county in the Republic when it comes to disposable income per person. 43% of Donegal's land area is used for farming, mostly in the fertile river valleys of the east and south. These specialise in beef production and one-fifth of Ireland sheep farming industry. Potatoes and barley are also important crops. Forestry is also an important industry, as is fishing. Remember the nickname of the herring gushers. Killybegs in the south of the county is the largest fishing port in Ireland, while Bunbeg in the parish of Gridoy is one of the smallest in Europe. For the GAA, Gaelic football is dominant in Donegal, with the senior team winning 10 Ulster Championships and 2 All Ireland wins in 1992 and 2012. Some of the highest ranking club teams are Gridoy, St Unions of Lesher Kenny, and Irua of Ballyshannon. Other sports present in the county include rugby, surfing, soccer, climbing, cricket, and golf. Donegal is home to the second largest Grail Tucked or Irish speaking area in Ireland. The Donegal Grail Tucked encompasses a geographical area of 1,502 square kilometres. This represents 26% of the total Grail Tucked land area. It has a population of 23,000. In the Grail Tucked is the parish of Gridoy, which is a cradle of traditional Irish culture and customs, and is one of Europe's most densely populated rural areas. It's home to our Clin Gridoy, the Northwest Regional Studios of the Irish Language Radio Service, or Radio Radio the Grail Tuckta, as well as many Irish colleges where secondary school students go during the summer to immerse themselves in the language. Donegal uses the Ulster dialect of Irish, which is very different to the Connacht or Munster dialects, being closely related to Scottish Gaelic. This leads to a nightmare situation in Irish listening comprehensions when this dialect is used. Instead of connoisseur to it, <laughs> Even though Roman Catholicism is the largest religious denomination, there are large minorities of Protestants in County Donegal, mostly Church of Ireland and Presbyterian. Being separated from both the Republic and Northern Ireland for so long, Donegal developed one of the strongest cultural identities of any county. Everything is just a wee bit different up there. Some famous people from or associated with the county include Daniel O'Donnell, Enya, Rory Gallagher, the bands Alton and Clannad, the Nobel Prize winning scientist William C. Campbell, 
Brian Field, Padder O'Donnell, and St. Colum Kill, who was born in Gaishin near Lesher Kenny. Some of the most popular surnames in the county include O'Donnell, Gallagher, Doherty, Boyle, McSweeney, McLaughlin, and Ward. Due to the diaspora, traces of County Donegal can be found all over the world. For example, you can find Donegal, Pennsylvania, Tyrconnell, Maryland, Lesher Kenny Township, Pennsylvania, and Donegal, Ontario. There's something a wee bit magical about the hills of Donegal, facing the wild Atlantic with its rugged cliffs and peninsulas, endless sandy beaches and an identity unlike any other. Don't let Tyrconnell be the forgotten county. For the next episode, we'll be staying up in Ulster for County Down. If you have any facts or information for the next episodes, please comment below or email countiesgw at gmail.com. Thanks for those who helped with information and subscribe for more videos about Ireland, Europe and the world.